we did uh, the concepts of chapter six, talking about overloading, about math class, about static variables and static methods. Uh, in the coming slides, we will go through some examples, uh, especially output examples of how this, these concepts are used. Our first example, uh, we have the following program and we need to find the output. And this is actually retrieved from one of the uh, uh, exams that we had in the previous years, which are uploaded on a blackboard. So please go there and double check the exams and you will find these questions. So we have the following. We have a class called object. We have private integer x, private string name, private static integer y equals zero. So we know that x and name, they are private variables of object, but we have y as a static, so it's shared for all of the objects and the initial value as zero. We have a static method, public static void set y, it will take new y as an integer and it will save it in y. So we, the main aim of this method is to set the value of y. We have another static method integer get y. It will retain the value of y. We have public object and then empty bracket because this method is having exactly the same name as the class. So this is a constructor without parameters, default constructor, it will do the following. It will initialize x to zero, name to no data, and it will increment y. We have another constructor with parameters. It will take new x and the string s. It will save a new x and x and s and name. So we will change the value of x and name. And also we will increment the static variable y. Then we have a set method. We will take a new x and s, and we will set the value in x and name. We have a get method to retain the value of x. We have an output method that it will output x dash name dash and y. So this is a void method. It will only do the output. And then I have two methods, public void update and also public void update. So we have two methods. They have exactly the same name. The different as the first one, it takes integer value. The second one, it takes string s. So these are overloaded method where they have different type of parameters. If you call the first method where you have integer value, uh, the coding that you have to do is you'll have to say x plus equal y. So just take the value y of the parameter, for example, five, and add it to x. If you have, for example, uh, to call the second one up, update string s, this is simply will take s and save it in name. So it will change the name. Now, this is the class. We know that we have y as a static. We have set y, get y as a static methods. We have default constructor, constructor with parameters. Also, we have set and get methods. Additionally, we have overloaded method. The first one, it will take an integer. The second one, it will take as a string. Uh, within the class that we have, we have to go with the find the main, uh, we will have to find the output. So we have public static void main. The first statement, it says object A equals a new object. So the meaning of this is we need to create object, the name of the object as A, and we should have all the private and static values. So we will have A. Inside A, I should have X, and I should have name, and I should have Y. So I have X, I have name, but I have to remember that Y is share, is a static, and I will declare it outside the object. Now we say a new object, empty brackets, it means I have to call a constructor. So I will go to the constructor that is the default one without parameters. 
it will mention x equals 0, name equals no data, and y plus plus. So x 0, name equals no data. And y plus plus, it means y will be incremented and the value should be as 1. So by this, we created object, we call the constructor, we initialize the value. So the first statement is done. The second one, it says create another one object B. So this is B. You should create the object such that, again, you should have X name and Y. But remember, Y is shared between all of the objects. So because here I have two values, I have 40 and between double quotation one, it means in this case, I will call the other constructor. I will send the value 40 and 1 to, as parameter to the constructor. And then I will, get, and I will say x equal a new x. So x equal 40. So x equal 40 for the new object. Name equal x. So name equals 1. y plus plus y should be again incremented and it should have the value as 2. So the latest value we have it as 2. Now this is created, the values are initialized and the static variable y has been incremented. Now I have to do a dot output. a dot output it means I have to call the method output and I have to call it for the object a. So let's go to the output method. This is the output method. What I have to do the output for, I have to output x dash name dash and y. For which object? For object A. So I'm talking about this object A. So we will output the value 0, no data, and 2. That's why you will have here the first line in your output 0, no data, and 2. Now we will go to the second line. And the second statement, we have b.output. Again, I will call the same method output, but I will call it for the object b. So this is the output. Output the value of name, x name, and y. So for the object b, I have 41 and 2. So we have here the output 41 and 2. So we have different values of x and name. But because y is shared, that's why I have the same value. Now we have a statement that says go to the object A. So I'm talking about this object. Call the method set x. So we will call this method set x. Send two values 30 and 2. So 30 for a new x and 2 as the string for s. The method it says take the new x, save it in x. So it means x will have 30. Take the value of s, which is 2, save it in name. So I will have here as 2. So let's put this one a little bit clear. So the new value of x is 30. The new value of name as is 2. So what we did actually, we just changed the values of x and name for which object? For object A, because we are calling it using the object A. Now I have to call for object B. So I will be talking about this object, object B. I have to call the method update and I have to send 10. Now I have to remember that update is overloading method. I have two updates. Because I have 10, this is an integer, so it means I have to go and call the first one. So we will send 10, and 10 will be as a value. Now the statement inside it, it says x plus equal value. So it means plus equal 10. I have to add it to x. Now, I have to be careful that I'm talking about which object. I'm talking about object B. So I have to go to object B. 40, 40 plus equal 10. So the value should be as 50.
Again, I have to call the method update, but we will call it for object A. So now we will talk about about this object, object A, and we will do it in this way. Sorry, and we will do it in this way. So I have three, and I will send it to the other method. So we will have here as three. And what I have to do, take this value, which we save it as S, and save it in name. And remember, we are talking about object A. So now this one will have the value as, as a three. Also, we'll continue with the statements. We have object.setY10. So now remember object is the same name of the class. And because setY is a static method, this is setY, and this is a static method, we can call it by using the class name. So call the method setY and send 10. So we will send 10. And I have to save this 10 inside y. So I will have to go to y and I will change the value as 10. I have to do a.output, b.output. So in a, I have 30, 3, and 10. So that's why we have 30, 3, and 10. Inside b, we have 51 and 10. So that's why 51 and 10. The last statement, system.out.println, object dot get y go to the method get y return the value of y currently the value of y we have it as 10 so do the output of 10 and that's why we will get 10 here so this is the output out of this equation where we have some static variables our static methods and also we have overloading method so let's recap about the main things we did in this example. The main thing that we have to remember are in our class, we have y as a static. That's why we have to remember to initialize it at the beginning. And we have to remember this is shared. We have two static methods, set y and get y. And because they are static, it means we can call them using the objects. We can say a.sety, b.sety. Or we can say the class name, object.setY. And all of them, they will do the same job. We have the constructor, that default constructor and with parameters. And all, always I have to remember to call them whenever we create an object. So in the first case, when we say object A equals a new object, we had to call the first constructor. We had to initialize the values and increment Y. If we miss this statement, then if we go and say a.output, we will not be able to do this output because we missed the initialization. Uh, similarly, I have an overloading method update. So from the main, if I say update 10, this is will call the method that it takes integer value and it will add the value to the x. If I say update 3, this is I'm, I'm sending string, so it means I have to go to the second one and I have to change the name of that. And I have to remember I'm calling them with which object because it will make a huge difference saying a.update is different than b.update and that's why your output will be different in this case. So this was an example of static variables and static methods with overloading. Uh, and we will have more examples of this as well.